Hey there, I'm Jesse, and you're listening to the Deep Lore Boys Podcast, where me, Matthew, and Jackson delve into the random, rare, and often ridiculous pieces of our world's history. In today's episode, we're going to go over the legendary Deputy Marshal Bass Reeves, the mysterious Poe Toaster, and some bizarre theme parks listed on Wikipedia. Some of the audio does get a little weird as this was recorded before we all had proper microphones, but the topics were really fun, and I wanted to keep the clips anyway, so I hope you enjoy them as much as I did. Have you guys ever heard of Bass Reeves? Bass Reeves? Have you Keanu ever heard Reeves, the fish? legend? Oh no, he's something. He looks like a really cool dude. He is that a really cool dude. That mustache is... Aw, oh, that's built like something else. So, Bass Reeves, uh, who was born July 1838 and lived until 1910... He was an American law enforcement officer, the first black deputy U.S. marshal west of the Mississippi River. This man was an absolute beast. In addition to being a marksman with a rifle and a revolver, Reeves developed superior detective skills during his long career. He had on record more than 3,000 arrests of dangerous criminals and shot and killed 14 of them in alleged self-defense. Holy crap, bro. (laughs) Uh, Wait a second, so this guy was just a totally wild and cowboy, bro. Oh, absolutely. This guy is nuts. Oh, the other thing was, uh, apparently, so it says Reeves brought in some of the most dangerous criminals of his time. He was never wounded, despite having his hat and belt shot off on several occasions. Separate occasions, rather. How do you get your belt shot off? How do you get your belt shot off? (laughs) Like... What was he what? doing? Did he get, like, <laughs> shot in, like, the belt buckle? Like, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, here... What do you do? So, here, here's another question, though. When he got his belt shot off, did his pants fall down? <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, did they dude. Stay up can you what? imagine... Can you imagine shooting somebody and they just don't even <laughs> flinch with their pants just drop? So, so, okay. He said that he had to shoot people in self-defense. <laughs> meaning that, could you imagine, it's likely that one of the people that shot his belt off was one of the people that died. Because oh, oh, for sure, like that. yeah. <gasps> that was Can you imagine the saw. last thing, the last thing you see is just his pants drop down, he just pulls out the revolver and blasts <laughs> you off. You just no. start laughing. <laughs> the last thing you see is the belt go down, but when the holster hits the ground... <laughs> When the holster of the belt hits the ground, it's empty, and the gun is in his hands. He just quick draws Dude, that fast. He just grabs it as it goes. Oh, my gosh. I would picture this guy doing it. Just as the pants go down, grabs the gun. Blasts the last it thing off. I saw was Bass's hairy legs, and then I was <laughs> up at the pearly gates. Oh, Dude, I would not want to be. I would not want to be a criminal in this guy's county. That's oh, all no. I can say. Oh, this that, guy is yeah. Crazy. Uh, apparently, uh, some criminals like turned themselves in when they realized that Bass was on their case. Like when they heard that Bass was after them, oh, they would just give up. They're just that's enough. I'm trying to find some Dude. of these actual stories I can cite. I might have to go away from the Wikipedia because it just gives very general information. One one tale I've heard about Bass is that he was like a master of of disguise. So there were these two criminals, and he disguised himself as a homeless man and, like, got in with them and convinced them that he was, you know, I I ain't no man of the law. You can tell me all your secrets. And so he learned everything about him. And then not only did he pull the old old revolver out on them and and arrest them both, but apparently he also, like, swooned their mom in the process of this. (laughs) Like... (laughs) I, I don't know where Dude, I read this, but I'm trying to find This it. guy has gone crazy. Holy crap, bro. <laughs> Wait a second. He was charged with murder. Of 14 people in self-defense. That's right. God bless Dude, America. Yeah. He murdered a, a cook. A, a posse cook, apparently. The cook of a posse, I guess. And... He said that it was a mistake. It was a misfire, his gun. Yeah, and he was acquitted. Oh, that's so right. Yeah, yeah, I did read about that, too. I want to find Dude, that's rough, nice... man. That's rough. I'm trying to find... Wait, there's a whole... Some... There's movies and stuff. Oh, yeah, no, he inspired The Lone movies, Ranger. Yeah. Actually, uh, I recently saw uh, The Magnificent Seven, and the character in there, I don't remember who plays him, um, prominent actor though. Denzel Washington. Uh, yes, yes, Denzel Washington uh, plays a character that's remarkably that? similar to him. 
Bass kind of strikes me as the kind of man who screams self-defense and then shoots you <laughs> like, <laughs> as soon as some conflict rises. But it was only 14. Like, Dude. out of 3,000 criminals, if he only shot and killed 14, yeah. that's a pretty good number. No, like, honestly, I think he did a good job. Yeah. 14 people, I gotta say, it, that's, a, that's a bit more than myself. Yeah. Just a tad bit, but I gotta say, like, out of 3,000, that puts him at a solid, like, 1 and 2, I think. So Something like that. So he did good. He did good. About 1 and one and 2 or 3 people he arrested, he killed. <laughs> 3,000 arrests, dude. Oh <laughs> my gosh, wait a second. I, I love wait that a second. I... A cab. <laughs> uh, dude, really? What? <laughs> Hold on. Oh no. Why? <laughs> That's terrible. But Did he time... support BLM? Oh, <laughs> That's a good question. I hope he did. What do you have supported BLM? What do you, I'm not I, sure I can well, support this guy until I know whether or not he's supported. I don't know. <laughs> this guy didn't didn't put up with a lot of crap, it seems. Yeah, it seems like... I mean, I'm sure he would have agreed with the sentiment. Right. But it doesn't seem that he really cared. Like, I think if you violate the law, you don't care. Yeah, no. I think if you do something, it's gone. He'll get you. And he's just, he's just gone. This is the man the who shot is, that's 14 people in self-defense. No, it says that one of his great-great-grandson, if you go up a little bit, um, is a National Hockey League player, Ryan Reeves, mm-hmm. who appears to play for the um, uh, St. Louis Blues, Penguins, and Vegas Golden Knights. So he's probably on the Golden Knights right now. That guy's got um, the blood of a legend. Dude, wait a second. Wait a second. Veins. You see this guy? We see this guy right here. No, he's, he's on the Rangers right now. Right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this little picture here. He's pretty cool looking dude i see the resemblance i see actually a lot of they look they look exactly actually, they, look the very same. they look exactly the same there's no difference this guy actually <laughs> if he just grew out a little mustache they're exactly the same. that's right well no that's no a difference look at look at old bass though that ain't no there little actually mustache. is yeah that's a that's a powerful mustache actually, that's one of the bushiest mustaches i've ever seen on the on um bass reeves not on his um not on Ryan Reeves. Not on Ryan. Dude, I want to see Ryan grow out a mustache like that and see what he does. Honestly. That's right. I mean, He'll I probably feel like if go there was and... a hockey team called like the Cowboys or something, he would have to. Bro, isn't that like football or something? Yeah, but there's a football <laughs> team, but there's no, there's not really a whole lot of Western did cowboy. Uh, it's because it's team. hockey. They live on ice, bro. Right? Walking around the Wild West. Allegedly, according to this, uh, one of his children. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure which one it was, but one of them, uh, like, murdered his own wife, and Bass oh, no. went after that guy's butt. He had to arrest his own son for murder, Benjamin Benny Reeves, who was charged with the murder of his own wife. Despite being deeply disturbed and shaken by the incident, Reeves nonetheless insisted on the responsibility of bringing Benny to justice. Dude, Benjamin, what are you doing? I know. Dude, think about this. His Benjamin could have grown up to be an NHL player too, but he didn't. <laughs> no, no, he had to murder his wife. Like he had to do him like that. Bass. Bass. I'm naming my kid Bass. I'm he was my kid Bass. he was named after Bass Washington, his grandfather. Imagine having the name Bass Washington. So he started off as a slave. Oh yeah. He was yeah. born into slavery. Yes. Born into slavery in 1838. Under, uh... So he straight up. It was rough. It, it was, was rough very for rough. Him. And still, bro. It, the Wikipedia says it appears plausible that Reeves was kept in bondage by William Steele Reeves' son, Colonel George R. Reeves. So his the last name may have come from the the people that he was uh, in slavery under. But wait, that I'm would actually sure. add up because the name of love, love, though. the name Reeves comes from the ancient Anglo-Saxon culture of Britain. Is apparently what I'm seeing for the name Reeves. Yeah, and, so and it says I'm a local official. White dude come over with the name Reeves, uh, slaves, and then they assume his name. Yeah. So, as far as I can tell here, good old Bass lived to a healthy 71 years, died in 1910, so about 111 years ago. Not uh, true, he's still alive. He was, he's still alive. well, y'all know, of course, like, he, government's he's trying to alive. cover it up. That's what I he saw, allegedly I died. saw him, I saw him. 
Uh, he was married twice and had 11 children. Oh, that's interesting. He was a great uncle of Paul L. Brady, who became the first black man appointed as a federal administrative law judge in 1972. That's cool. And like you said, he's the great, great, great grandson. Great, great, great grandson is uh, Ryan Reeves, hockey player. Is he still a judge? Um, that's a good question. Time. Paul L. Brady, let me see. No, he's not. Paul L. Brady, I think he's oh, yeah, still he alive. Away. He's still alive. Yeah. Oh, wait, Did no. he die? Did, hold on. Okay, no, no, no. He was born in 1927. He's 94 right now, but it doesn't look like he's died. He's 94 he's, years he's still old. still around. Still around yeah. He retired in 1997, but yeah. He retired a while ago. So that's uh, that's what Bass cool Reeves guy. for you. What a what an absolute legend. Dude, he seems like a pretty cool dude. I'm naming my kid Bass. I'm, I'm naming, naming my, my kid Bass. Bass. Honestly, that's right. I feel like I feel like being named Bass kind of like set him up for the world. Oh yeah. Like he was already set from the beginning. Yeah, I feel like once you're named Bass, you can't fail. You can't really you're, go wrong. That's it. There. That's all you no. need. Yeah. Like. You're already just dressed for success. That's why they call it Bass Pro Shop. Yeah, that's why they call it. That's, that's why there's right. the Bass Pro Shops pyramid in Tennessee, because that's just how it is. That's just Bass. Like, what else can I say? Just uh, don't bass. don't murder your wife and disgrace the name, man. Yeah, don't do that. That's don't all. That. That's what we learned. What, what we got? What we got? What we got today? Uh, actually, Jackson Jackson has sent two articles that we've never gone over. Uh, the Poe Toaster has been in the back of my mind for oh, the a long toaster, while now. Yeah, he's, he's been here for quite a little while. Jackson, what, um, what's the lore? What's the lore here on the Poe Toaster? Okay, so there was a poet named Edgar Allan Poe, or was named Edgar Allan Poe. He died a long time ago. Um, he wrote a poem called The Raven and lived in Baltimore at some point. Um, he is now buried in Baltimore. That is why the NFL team is called the Ravens. Um, oh, that's actually why they're I, called I, the Ravens. Yes, that is why Lord. they're called the Ravens. Wow, Lord, I didn't know that. The, yes, that's that's why. If you ever wonder, so that's um, that's why there's like a raven on his grave and stuff. Like he had a lot to do with ravens. There's even ravens at the Baltimore Zoo um, because of this. Anyway, um, when he died, there's a man who is dressed in black with a wide brimmed hat and white scarf and would pour himself a glass of cognac and raise a toast to Poe's memory and vanish into the night once a year. No one knows who he is. He's one mysterious man. Whoa. Are you just reading this right off the article? Here? Yes. Yeah, we did. I'm, I'm on so the basically. article right now. So he's just like a strange guy. In 2010, there was no visit by the toaster, nor has he appeared any year since. Whoa. Oh, so this guy is unidentified. This is actually really interesting. Yeah, nobody knows who he was. Wow. So when did Edgar Allan Poe die? He died at the age of 40 on eight, in 1849 under mysterious circumstances. Okay, okay so um, apparently people tried to catch the Poe toaster in 2006. I want to know, yeah, I want to know, like, what the heck was going on there? Did people just see this guy and they're like, yeah, look at this guy, we're going to get him. And they just, well, like... it, this has been going on for, like, nearing 100 years. So this is, yeah. a, this is a big deal. I'm sure he's like a... He's the equivalent of Bigfoot to, to these people. <laughs> he like, hasn't showed up since 2010. According to eyewitness reports and notes accompanying offerings in later years, the original toaster made the annual visitation from sometime in the 1930s until his death in 1998, after which their tradition was passed on to a son. Hmm. So he left a note in 2001, which apparently sparked some controversy. Oh. The note said... Th so this was a few days before the Super Bowl, which was the Ravens and the New York, the New York Giants. And it says the New York Giants, darkness and decay and the big blue hold dominion over all the Baltimore Ravens, a thousand injuries. They will suffer Edgar Allan Poe evermore. Wow. And apparently that that sparked a lot of controversy, I guess. Never before had the toaster commented on sports or other current events. Um, Baltimore won the game 34-7, so um, this was not even accurate. And wow. then he left another note, critical of France's opposition to the war in Iraq. I'm kind of confused as to why he thinks Edgar Allan Poe would actually care about such details. Maybe um, he would. Do we know that this was the Poe toaster, or was it just some guy leaving uh, They the seem to be notes left by the toaster. However, I should point out, this would be in 1999 a note was left that said that the toaster had died the previous year and that it was now a son doing it. And then at 
2001, a controversial thing on sports showed up, and then again in 2004 about the war in Iraq. So it seems that his son began leaving a lot more controversial notes. So Jeff Jerome, the former curator of the Poe House and Museum, has suggested that the 2001 and 2004 notes left by the Poe Toaster uh, may have reflected an unwillingness of the son uh, to take the tradition as seriously as had the father. Um, he said that a final note left sometime between 2005 and 2008 was so dismaying, Jerome said, that he decided to fib and announced that no note had been left. And oh, he man. has declined to reveal its contents. That's rough. Yeah, it sounds like the original Poe Toaster was the real deal, but uh, whoever he chose to carry on the tradition was not having it. I just want to know, it says a group of onlookers attempted unsuccessfully to detain him so did they just see him like walking out from the cemetery and they were like yeah and just like trying to get him. him or something like what were they Toast trying to this. do like <laughs> i guess it must have been well he because nobody knows who he is so i'm sure it was a bunch of people like here he is this is our chance who is the po toaster like what if you pulled the mask off and it was like donald trump jr dude yeah that could be wild like a scooby-doo crap so I think it became famous because then in 2011, okay, this is like once the internet got bigger and I think people started hearing about it, four imposters immediately dubbed <gasps> fa- false toasters uh. identified because all such four walked in clear sight of waiting observers contrary to the real poster's secretive nature. So there were Man, four. They ruined it. 2011, four people were fake. They, four fake people all showed up at the same time. And then just in, as I that, say, this in 2012, is awesome. there was no appearance from him. And, and then after that, so after several years, then the Maryland Historical Society organized and set it back up. And now they have like an official toaster that's just set up by the society to do it. Although it's not the original toaster. So we will never really know then like what his real motives were for doing it. Well, I mean, it says that every year he would go up to the grave and he would he would just give a toast to edgar Allan poe right isn't it just like a respect hey bro yeah it just seems like you, you a real one being respectful hey bro man yeah that's just really like edgar Allan poe there is a list of abandoned amusement parks <laughs> wait a second i just found gay world amusement park <laughs> what that's in singapore <laughs> hold on oh, no. gay world is that a last oh, name or is it legitimately uh, no, just it, gay world it's gay world formerly known as happy world then became gay world it is oh okay. yeah it so closed it's not, down in 1978 it's not the kind of gay we're thinking of yeah it ain't like the gay it's not the gay <laughs> world amusement park let's see like what japanese occupation wait a second well, what is the um oh the japanese had it for a time during world war ii wait a second <laughs> so there was gay world new world and great world were three amusement parks back in you know the 70s in singapore hmm. apparently gay world and great world closed in 78 and new world closed in 87 man they weren't gay enough they were not gay enough <laughs> so sad this is kind of reminded me of pleasure gay. island from um um Pinocchio, where they turn all the boys into donkeys when they go there. Um, it's God. like the, the creepy amusement park. Oh, no. There's not really anything to be gained from um, <clears throat> from watching Pinocchio. It's not No, really, I'm um... sure there's not. I just want to say, this Gay World Amusement Park wiki gets better the further you go down. I just yeah. found a tab called Frequent Fires. Yeah. It says, another factor that caused Gay World's drop in popularity was the frequent fires that ravaged the park. In 1962, wow. fires broke out twice within two months. Uh, oh. And yeah, it says uh, oh, there shoot. were fires twice in 1972, once in 1976, and they destroyed more than $500,000 worth of goods. Dude. Yeah, so they, they got a lot of, a lot is of that, I wonder if problems. that's with inflation or without inflation, because if it's not, that would be like... This isn't... But, well, no, because yeah, it would have had to translate it over already from... Yeah. Okay. As visitors became scarce, the state of Gay World Park deteriorated and the park was no longer properly maintained. What country is this? It's in? reported that rats and stray dogs were often seen running around the complex. Oh, Yikes. no. Yikes. Okay. That's a mood. Okay, so in 2000, in the year 2000, it was announced that they would tear it down. So it's straight up, yeah, it's gone at this point. There is no more. 
it's not like a spooky defunct amusement park. It's just when was well, torn down. There is no I more of the gay world. Gay world is just straight up gone. This is so sad. List of dinosaur parks? For real? Yeah. Oh, man. Wait a second. Did we find the one that we what? went to? Maybe it's got to be here. It's got to be. I love how they all begin with dinosaur. Yeah, they're all going to be just dinosaur. Dinosaur land, White Post, Virginia. Yeah, that's got to be it. Gotta that's be that's it. definitely over 50 that's dinosaurs. That's it. Called. Here it like, is. Yeah, this is. dinosaur land. Oh, Did you find the dinosaur, dinosaur land that you went to? I found an article on it. I've been here, yeah. Yes. Nice. Sculptures of tit- Titanosaurus and Tyrannosaurus engaged in an, in an in parentheses, epic battle. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, jeez. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. What? Oh, oh no. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Oh, oh. no, no, no. <laughs> Oh, oh no. wow! Uh, Wait a off, minute. Off recording. Off recording. Uh, no dinosaur land. We're not. No. <laughs> Apparently, blackface scandal. <laughs> um, and Confederate flag scandal. Confederate flags and blackface at dinosaur land. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, <that's, laughs> no. Dude, I don't remember any of that when I was there. Oh, oh. no! No, dude. Wait, White Post, Virginia? <laughs> no, dude. What? The park's gift shop sells educational material and toys, including dinosaur memorabilia. The site has been criticized by some visitors for selling Confederate flags and figurines featuring blackface. <laughs> oh, no. What? Yeah, doing? like, man, come on, man. Man, what? Dude, it's a dinosaur park. It's a man. dinosaur park. What are you doing? Dude, dude like, <laughs> just enjoy what? the dinosaurs. <laughs> Oh wait a second! Jeez. What else happened? Oh, it was so it was started as a gift shop called Rebel Corner, and then yeah, they just straight up started building some statues, and then people started going for that. It had only been going for what well, looks like four years. It started in 1963 as Rebel Corner, and then in, by 1967, it was Dinosaur Land. I love how yeah, I love how there's like 40 dinosaur worlds and dinosaur lands all over America, and the one that I go to is the one that's famous for its blackface scandal. <laughs> That's that's it. right. It's like, of course, that's the one. Yeah. Hi again, it's Jesse. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Deep Lore Boys podcast. You can find more episodes of our show on YouTube and Spotify, and probably many other places pretty soon. We're figuring it out. Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a day that is nothing short of interesting. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>